Well, hello, my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. My name is Matt Harvey. I am the founder and lead investigator with Deep Woods Paranormal. My wife and I, along with others, investigate everything paranormal in nature. Every week, we will discuss everything from creepy haunted locations to ghosts to Bigfoot, UFOs, Dogman, and other cryptid creatures, and explore all things paranormal in nature. Well, hello, my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal podcast. We are on today with Phil Webster. He is a psychic. He is also an actor, an author, and a teacher. So he's quite the guy. Um, He's been researching the paranormal and kind of researching mediumship for a long time. And we'll uh, we'll actually start there with him, and, and maybe he can kind of talk about those four things. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's a, it's a pleasure to, to be here and, and meet you both. Yeah. We're really yeah, excited, excited that you're here you on, with us today. Yeah, it's, cool <laughs> yeah it's, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's, what is it? It's like 11, 11 at night over here or something like that. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm just about still with it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the book uh, is called Letting Glow. Um, it's been out since last uh, spring. Um, it's doing okay. Uh, first book that I've wrote. And and I think like possibly the you know the the sort of catalyst for it was was uh, a, an, an experience that I had around my mum passing um, in 2021. So that was really something odd happened the night before she died, oh. and that really spurred me to to just sort of go into this deep rabbit hole. You know, I, I'd always kind of like had a an eye on on, on sort of paranormal stuff. Um, I hadn't really touched it for many years, um, but then this this event that happened around my mum passing kind of triggered like a bunch of memories and I was thinking okay like this this kind of stuff obviously that was a big thing in itself um losing a parent but um what happened around it kind of made me look back on other things that had happened over my life and it was seen that every few years something would be kind of tapping me on the shoulder like for for one of a better expression yeah so is the um experience that you're talking about with your mother is that in the book yeah i mean it, it's how the book starts um so i mean i'm not really you know ruining right. too much it's like so in the first two pages um and and and, it, and it's an odd one you know because uh, again I, I was really close with my mom um she was uh she, she lived on a place called the isle of Wight, which is a, a small island at the south of england i'll just kind of set this story up um just to to sort of give sort of more relevance to what happened um so it was the end of end of the whole covid thing it was um uh the start of 2021 so we would just been through christmas various lockdowns all that stuff um and and i'd kept away thinking that i was doing the right thing you know i was like listening to what the government was saying and all that stuff um and and, and i was also waiting for for a job on a big movie it was like one of these big marvel movies it was it was um i see that you've got a Grogu behind you. It wasn't a Star Wars movie, but it was uh, Do- Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Yes, we've seen oh, yeah. that. Yeah, so I was waiting to work on that, and I had like a good four month stretch on it. I just like I was just like one of the warriors in the in the whole camouflage thing. But nothing, nothing cool. you know. It, it it was good, you know, and and I hadn't had any work for a while, and it was a good stretch of work. And if you caught COVID, they would have just kicked you off straight away. So right. I was kind of mindful of that, and and then I was also trying to do the right thing by my mum anyway. So point being, I hadn't seen her for for a couple of months. And um and we just gone through Christmas and I just spent it with my partner. My mum was on her own on the Isle of Wight. So that's a very rural place. Um, she lived alone. She was 76 years old. She had various age-related health problems like, you know, heart condition and high blood pressure. But I thought, you know, she's going to be around for a while. She would always bounce back right. uh, from whatever, you know, kind of thing happened. And um anyway, so we would FaceTime every day. And on this night, I think we'd spoke maybe two or three times that day already. Um and and she you know i kind of knew a routine like i said like i knew all the neighbors we didn't have any other family there it's, it's a really quiet place and we were in another lockdown um and i called her on this evening and she kind of just to sort of explain it like sort of practically she had her phone charging on the floor and as she kind of leaned in to to and she pressed the button to sort of answer the call she was leaning in one side and there was a man leaning in from the other side and i saw him long enough that i could like describe him he had like thinning gray hair glasses Looked like he was maybe mid sixties, something like that, and and I was kind of shocked, you know. I was like, "Well, who the hell's that?" You know, like, a, and and as she picked the phone up, he kind of went out of shot, and she went and sat down, and I said, "I was like, well, who's that?" And she said, "Who's what?" And I was like, "Okay," because <laughs> your said, mom lives alone. Yeah, she lives alone, and I know all the neighbors. I, I, you know, she'd been alone for 
pretty much a year through the whole COVID thing. I knew her day to day routine. She was staying home. She was, I mean, she she was suffering with depression and and you know the the whole lockdown thing really hard times, mm -hmm. hard times. Yeah, you know, it was it, it was you know in hindsight, I wish I'd have done things differently. But anyway, um, so you know, I kind of knew her, everybody that lived nearby, or, and and plus, I must mention, it was like ten thirty at night, something like that. Um, so you know, there was no one there, and. You know, I wasn't there, obviously, so I can't 100% say there was absolutely nobody there, but I believe that there was no one there. And and I said, you know, well, who was that? And she was like, who was who what? And I said, well, who was the guy? You know, and she was like, no idea what you're talking about, you know. <laughs> and she just started telling me about her day. And I said, mom, I said, sorry to interrupt. I said, but uh, who's the guy? And she was like, no one, you know, you know. And she would always do this thing, like if there was somebody with her and when she was on the phone, she would kind of put on these airs and graces and speak a lot more politely and, and and it was like impossible to get a conversation out of it you know and she wasn't doing any of that she was just being herself and chatting away and I thought well I don't know I was like well I, I guess I was mistaken you know and um although I know I'd seen the guy and anyway we spoke for like another 30 45 minutes she didn't acknowledge anyone at all nobody said good night to her or nothing like that it was a very small house um and then when I finished the call my my fiance she said like what what, what was all that about and I said, well, I, I saw someone, but she said there was no one there. Anyway, we went to bed um, the next morning, got the phone call from a neighbor. They couldn't get into the house. And and my mama passed away um, same, some point. from the same night. Yeah, from, through the night or in the morning. Um, I, I'm not quite sure. I, I never really sort of dug into it. I kind of didn't want to know, you know, the, the yeah. full details. Um, but I was like, OK, well you know going through the 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 shock of all that um it was just my mom I haven't really got any other family or anything um this thing kind of sat at the back of my mind I was like well well what was that you know what what are we talking here you know and and I kind of it, it wasn't my main concern because I was grieving and and you know just crying non-stop and it was it was horrible you know um for, for any anyone that's been through that you, you know you know how it is um yeah. and, and one thing i always say is kind of like you know when you lose a parent you really lose like that one witness to your life right you know that person right. that was, and any kind of you you feel like you can prepare for it but it it just you know it's, it's, lost it's, it kind of, she lost her dad yeah her you can't um, prepare so, for it yeah. even if yeah. like when we lost matt's mom we she was in hospice mm. so mm. we knew she was going and yeah. they say you can compare, like, prepare for it, but you can't. It yeah. it. Yeah. It's like for me, I I feel like it was stepping into an older universe. You know, there's the, there was this this one way your mom was there, and then there's the one where she's not, and it's like right. It's, it's you know it's 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 life know, changing. Yeah, it's life changing. Yeah. It changes how you see things. It changes your everyday life. And Completely. um, like you notice, like okay, I'm gonna pick up the phone and I'm gonna oh yeah yeah. That I mean that's yeah. that's just stopped now, and and we're nearly at the three year mark, and and I got to say that I've, now you said that I'm realizing I I'm, that's not happening, but that that's been very recent that that I was still kind of yeah. going through those motions, right. you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so you know, I, I went to work on this movie, and and I kind of didn't speak to anyone for like a month or something. I was just kind of like had my head buried in books and and um there was a lot of people on there uh, and then eventually at some point I sort of came around and started socializing and and I told someone this story that, that I just told you and they said well obviously that's like a spirit guide or you know and, and I was like okay you know I, that, I, I'm like yeah but I I don't know I, I mean like I wasn't sure about opening that door you know right. um like what I, I kind of it was an odd one because the, he didn't look like anyone I recognized he didn't look like my dad he didn't look like an uncle anything like that so it was just this thing that had happened but it wasn't really comforting but it definitely happened you know and and, and it was just such an odd thing and 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 anyway so the, this person suggested that I start asking for signs so just quickly I'll just tell you about kind of the first thing that really happened um so with me and my partner we'd moved into a, a new apartment around the same time that I was working on that movie and I've got a bunch of Blu-rays, right? You know, they're kind of useless now or whatever. But anyway, we so I've got all these. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking about, I might get back into it. But anyway, I've, <laughs> I've got all these Marvel movies and I was putting them away because I'd been on this film the whole time. And pretty much my my partner, she just moved us in on her own. I've got to give her credit. You know, I, I didn't do anything. <laughs> and, um, but the least I can do is put these things away. So 
I got this box of Blu-rays and and I noticed and, and sorry, I always forget to mention this, but I, I was like, okay, let's do this ask for a sign thing. I was like, all right, mom, if you're around, give me a sign, you know. So anyway, I went about putting away these Blu-rays and I noticed that the one that was missing was was Doctor Strange. And I thought, and you well, were how, just on that film. How weird. Yeah. I'm like, I'm working on this film every day. This is my day off, you know. And I got all the rest of them and I was just like, well, that's so annoying. You know, they're all in one box in the same place. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, well, whatever. And I put them away. And and a bit, an hour or something later, I came across like a stack of books, like the other side of the apartment. And um, and this Blu-ray was sitting on top of them. And I was like, well, you know, that what the hell is that doing there? That's kind of odd. And then all of a sudden it kind of triggered the, oh yeah, I just mm-hmm. asked for a sign. And um, the book underneath the Blu-ray was poking out and the author's name said Maureen, which was my mum's name. And then the book underneath that part of the title poked out saying Living. And that's all I could see. So I've got Doctor Strange, Maureen, and Living about an hour after I asked for a sign. So I was like, again, I don't, I don't know. The skeptic in me overrides everything all the time, but I'm like, right. oh, well, that's kind of a sign, right? Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, so so that was kind of the first thing. And and I did a lot of, started reading some books um, on mediumship. Um, and uh, and again, I'll, I'll sort of go, I'll backtrack with the other things that have happened in the past. But I, I'd, I'd read a book uh, by a, a medium, uh, an author called Claire Broad. Um, I didn't know where she was from. She could have been from, sorry, I listened to an audio book. So she could have been from the States, she could have been from Australia, the UK or whatever. And anyway, the book started with in, in a cemetery uh, uh, in London where she f- had her first experience as a child, like her grandma came through and, and gave her a message when she was like four or something like that. And the cemetery was across the street from where I lived right this really? random book out of nowhere right wow. and i'm like what, what are the chances of this again you know and, Another and sign. So she, yeah i mean she told this story about how she was in richmond it's a place called richmond cemetery and and i could literally look out my window and see the cemetery you know in this place that we moved into and and um and i was like well that's kind of odd and i listened to the whole book and and, and it helped it was comforting it was on about you know talking about the we go on and obviously what you would expect it to talk about um from a medium and um and pretty soon after that i saw that she was having a course at a place called the college of psychic studies in london which is essentially like the x men school or something right? it's just like this uh, i was like the, the college of what psychic studies yeah. all right yeah. so um um so i went along to a class and we kind of hit it off and i and i did tell her a few stories that i'll i'll, I'll tell you guys about um and she was the first person to be like oh well no well yeah that makes perfect sense that means that and and this means this you know things that had happened years before my mom passed and um and i was like well maybe it's the, you know there's just something to this um we, we hit it off became like friends very quickly and then the next step was that i stumbled across the spiritualist church um i, I think you guys have have them here and there yeah the i think we have some here in the states they're like 10 a penny here like you can't walk around london without running into one somewhere and and, and i didn't know these things were a thing either you know um right. so spiritualist just um they're, they've essentially they've got a medium uh, they're, they're pretty much all have the same formula they'll have a medium uh, typically on a sunday night that will just give a demonstration of mediumship and um and i was like well i'm i'm gonna go along to this you know this was probably two months three months after my mom passed and um i showed up this one night and again i don't know what it is like the skepticism like come uh, even though i believe in these things uh, you know yeah. um i qu- constantly question it i don't, I don't know I do but the I, same thing. I do the same yeah. thing. Yeah. You have to. You yeah. Have to. But but then I tell people sorry. everything would be a ghost or everything would mm. be this or that. You well, know? yeah. And and this one keeps me honest. But yeah, I mean Yeah, absolutely. That, and that's the thing. But the the thing is when I tell people my story and they're like, nah, I'm like, then I get offended, you know. <laughs> but we're doing exactly the same thing. But but anyway, I, I went along to this um demonstration of mediumship. And I, and I'd got really weirdly paranoid about it. I put all my social media stuff to private. I, I don't know who I thought knew I was going there. No one knew I was going there. You know, just showed up and um, and she just worked her way around the, the small congregation in this small church, and she was just getting like affirmation after affirmation. People were just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is kind of nuts. She, this by the time she got to me, and she didn't go to everybody. But she came to me and immediately she said, oh, you're, you're a medium, you know? And, and I was like, no, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking into it, you know? <laughs> um, 
and 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 first off she she started telling me about a, a guy that had died and and I, and I couldn't place him for a long time but just to sort of cut the story short as, as soon as I realized something clicked and I was like oh shit, she's talking about this guy from when I was like 20 years old you know and and everything she said just matched completely and just before she finished she said oh I, I have a lady here that's recently passed you know and and this was the this was really the game changer for me. So the, this medium, she had a very strong London accent, like a Cockney accent, you know. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, her accent changed, and it was my mum's accent. It was like a Northern English accent, and and there's like a, a very clear distinction between them. And um and she didn't say much. She just kind of described the conditions around her passing, and she talked about actually being lifted up by angels and 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 all this kind of nice stuff. But it was the accent changing. I, I was just right. my, you know, heart was racing, a lump in my throat, and and that was really the the game changer for me. That kind of, I was like, well, this woman, I've never seen her before in my in my life, you know. And and there was, it was my mum's voice that came through essentially. Wow. Um so, so that was it, you know. That that kind of really was the catalyst for the book essentially. Um, and I and I started writing it about all of those experiences learning about mediumship which i've been doing for the last few years now um i I guess i'm where are we yeah about to hit my fourth year of actively kind of like being on it um and then yeah like i say it kind of opened up all these other memories that that i was like okay well actually maybe that was a thing and that definitely was a thing and you know all these all these things that we sort of you know you get older or, or or what have you or you get cynical somewhere along the way and you kind of dismiss these things. Right. Uh, what I felt like, yeah, like so many of them will be sort of fleeting, you know. I mean, you guys know, you know, there'll be a flash in the corner of the eye, or mm. you know, or 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 even you know, faced with you know experiences like I had around my mum passing, I still would question it, and it still wouldn't make sense in the way that everything else makes sense, you know. Um, so when I kind of went back and looked at other things that had happened over the years with a sort of different lens, it seemed like this had been my I, I hate to sound grandiose and say calling, but I feel like that that was it all along, you know, um, everything kind of clicked into place through that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, no, I'll stop talking. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that's I have good. a, I have a question to follow up with that. So now that you feel like this is your calling, are you actively pursuing uh med- like media? How do you say it? mediation or med- uh, mediumship. mediumship? Mediumship. Sorry. And, mm-hmm. and if, if you are, are you going to, like speak at one of those churches that you have in town or how do you go about being a medium in England? Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of sort of feeling my way around it. Um, So th- this happened. I mean, I didn't, I, I went along, I, I would go to this church, the same place where, where I got the first message. And I probably went like a, a handful of times over the course of a year. I wasn't kind of running there every Sunday or anything. I probably went five or six times. And every time, it would be the same thing. Some of the medium would be like, oh, you're a medium, you know, and, and some of them were being so specific um, uh, uh, about people in my life. Like my, my, my dad came through at one point, I mean, to absolutely no sort of error, you know, she described him perfectly. I don't know if he's alive or dead. I haven't seen him for 20 years. I presume apparently he is dead, but anyway, excuse me, but it was, you know, I was like, okay, well, yeah, that's him, you know, and, and everything she said about the way he treated me and my mom and stuff like that. Um, you know nailed it so so like and, and and i'm not saying that absolutely every one every medium that i've experienced have been like amazing there's been a few that have been like well you know i've got this older person here and they might be a grandma you know what i mean there's the, some yeah. things that have made. um but yeah it, it it did sort of you know really pique my interest and, and and i met a couple along the way and one invited me to a development circle so you basically just show up there and sit with a few people. We're not allowed to tell each other anything about our actual lives, you know. Um, so essentially, strangers, and then we'll we'll practice on each other. You know, one will be the the sitter, and and we'll kind of open up, um, and then try and give them some messages, and they'll say if it if it makes sense or not. Um, yeah, pretty much straight off the bat, I, I've had like a, I was I've always said a hundred percent success rate. The other day I didn't. So that that kind of squashed that, but I was doing kind of really well with it. Um, There's always yeah. going to be a time where it just yeah. doesn't work out. Because I've yeah. been to a, several mediums. So here in the States, they do like um, almost like a theater show, but it's a medium. Mm. And then you can pay to go to the medium. And um, 
they kind of are very broad though and then they'll like go mm. over there I'm, they're kind of like the ones on tv and yeah. sometimes they're really good and sometimes they just nothing's hitting well sometimes yeah messages get crisscrossed too oh yeah it's true it's a room spirits, full of people spirits are here and then they're gone and then they're here and then they're gone and then right you know, you like and it's a, like i can't with this person like actually not with that feels like it's full of people and it's like everybody's pushing it's like a, a riot almost everybody's pushing their way to try and get to the front you know what i mean yeah 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 <laughs> yeah no well that's that's what i've heard definitely from, from a lot of mediums that, that have been you know uh working for 20 years uh, they'll say that it is like that and they'll just have to kind of try and form a, a an orderly queue you know to to have people come through each time um yeah you know again i've definitely experienced some that have been better than others um it, it's interesting though because because here we have a very um traditional sort of history with the whole spiritualism thing i mean it's a religion now right i mean it's not i think they I don't know. I, I can't really speak for them, but I, I don't consider myself a spiritualist, although I have uh, trained with them and, and and studied with them and done workshops and courses and, and all the rest of it. But I feel that there's a that there's a very traditionalist way of doing things. And, and I feel like a little bit of a maverick coming in, writing this book, saying, hey, I'm learning to be a medium. You, this is what worked for me. And, and this could be what works for you, which is essentially what the book does. Um, whereas, you know, some of the people that I've been taught by have been working for 20 years. They, they never did a reading for the first six or seven years. You know what I mean? So there's a kind of, I, I don't want to sort of upset anyone uh, along the way. Right. Um, but at the same time, you could be revolutionizing the in industry and teaching in a different way. And people yeah. grasp yeah. that concept, you know, maybe easier than, mm. you know, going to this, I don't want to take anything away from them, but maybe, you know, what you're doing is good. Like, well, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I haven't had any negativity around it from, from, from experienced mediums so far. Um, but yeah, it, I, I do want to be respectful of it. And, and, you know, it's got, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of, again, I'll, I'll go into the other stuff, but I feel like I'm really at the start of this journey without actively pursuing this, you know, so. So you can put 10 mediums in a room at a location, let's just say that's severely haunted, right? And you mm, know, there's mm. X, Y, and Z ghosts there. And that, you know, every medium could pick up on a different spirit or they might not pick up on anything. It's, it's yeah. really like a relationship between you and the spirit, essentially. You know, yeah. I can walk yeah. through places and I pick up on little things here or there. You know, there's a bunch mm, of little kids mm. running around in here right now. You mm. know, they're attached. We have what we call haunted dolls and Raggedy Ann back he there. He buys attached dolls. It's horrible. <laughs> right, <man. All> right. <laughs> but uh, Raggedy Andy back there has a little boy spirit attached to him. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I mean, 10 people can go into 10, you know, the same location, completely cold and, you know, get completely different experiences. You know, yeah. All of them can be yeah. mediums or psychics or sensitive or whatever, you mm -hmm. know, so mm -hmm. it's just, it's, everybody has a different way of going about, you know, doing the research and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel, I mean, again, just sort of, uh, you know, the, the last few years, like I, I'll, I can definitely see a correlation between sort of um, and, and going to we were talking about uh, meditation before we started um, mm -hmm. the when I when I sit in meditation and, and I'll and I'll, you know, act, actively try and sort of like raise uh, I hate to use the, the cliches, but raise my vibration and and um i can see a correlation between it you know things run a lot smoother um and then this this last year when i've got caught up in the you know the publicity for the book and all that kind of stuff then it's the the mediumship side has actually taken a back seat you know which kind of was the point of it's kind of like you know ironically right. taking it away when i when i wrote this book for that you know yeah um, but you yeah, get busy but well, yeah, that's it, and 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 I can see it kind of it it suffers, you know, when I do. Um, the the more I've been open to it, then the the more frequently things come, and and I suppose that's also where skeptics step in and say, well, you're looking for it, you know. So, but I think it does work like that, you know. I think I think you have to, what you know, you have to be open to it and and expect it for it for it to for it to work. Right, right, and there's always going to be a skeptic wherever you go. There's never going to not be that one person well that's that goes into fear and essentially goes into 
people not wanting to experience that thing. They don't want it to be real. Mm. So no matter what you say, no matter what, they can walk in and say a full-body apparition disappear right in front of them. Uh, and no matter yeah. what, it's not going to be an apparition. It's going to be something else. Yeah. So right. there's nothing you can do. No. Anyways, <laughs> we're running out of time, but uh, you guys oh, should damn. go over and check out his book. Yes. We're gonna... Link down below in the description. Uh, also his Facebook, I'm sorry, his, his uh, Instagram. YouTube ch- channel. Uh, is yeah instagram man? um okay. slowly starting with youtube um but yeah it's pretty much phil webster phil with two l's um, yeah. got a website we'll and, um you. we'll have to have you back on here soon yes you yeah, are so interesting yeah. it's always fun it's to talk to it's been you. a pleasure a completely different perspective yes so thank you again. no thank you very much we appreciate you yeah it's and, been a pleasure uh, we'll, we'll definitely catch you on uh the next one yeah absolutely thank you i'd love to come back mm-hmm.